Welcome back to Sunday Sports Extra. We are just a few days away from signing day. It's on Wednesday, a day always filled with excitement and optimism for every college football fan base. I'm joined now by Matt Preem of Duck Territory of the 24-7 Sports Network. Matt, what should Duck fans look forward to this Wednesday at signing day? The big news is they've got a couple five-star guys, Royce Freeman, uh, the, the big one, the running back, six foot, 235 pound guy that's coming in. Uh, a lot of big schools out west and nationally wanted him. Arian Springs, he's a guy that's been flirting with five-star rankings. As ratings are adjusted, he drops, he's raised. He's he's dropped down to a four-star now, but uh, he's a big corner that's coming in, instant impact guy. And then on, on top of that, they've got Morgan Mahalik, a four-star quarterback, uh, elite 11 guy, went to the opening. Uh, really similar storyline high school-wise of current quarterback Marcus Mariota. The Ducks, the big storyline for the Ducks, I think, during this recruiting season was the commitment and the decommitment of Buda Baker, widely considered the best football player, the best prospect yeah. in the Northwest. How big of a loss is it for Oregon to lose out on Baker? It's always big when you lose your region's best player, and that's who Buda Baker was. Coming out of Bellevue in the uh, Seattle area, up in Washington, he's the best guy up and down the West Coast, athlete-wise. He's the best corner. Uh, Oregon was recruiting him as a receiver, and so it didn't hurt them that much because they quickly went out and found a guy just as fast, same body type, same skill set from, from Florida. But if Oregon was looking at him from a strictly talent purpose, it's a big loss. It, it doesn't kill the class, but it, it certainly left a little crater there. Matt Prem of Duck Territory of the 24-7 Sports Network joining us on Sunday Sports Extra. A few days left in the recruiting period. Still a lot of guys yeah. uncommitted, still room to, to add to the class. Who are some Duck targets that they hope to add in the next few days? Well, the, the popular one is uh, John Juju Smith out of Long Beach Poly. Uh, he's long been considered a USC lean uh, right outside their backyard. But Oregon has, they sent six coaches in last week for their final pitch and apparently they didn't tell any, didn't talk to him at all about other schools. They just sold the Oregon program and why he should go there. Oregon's kind of trickling up a little bit in terms of interest with him. That's a guy to watch for. He's an athlete. Oregon is recruiting him as a receiver. Uh, they're also recruiting a defensive tackle out of San Antonio, Trey. I'm going to try and pronounce his name right. Trey Lama Tafalua uh, out of San Antonio. He's close friends with Arian Springs, three-star defensive tackle. And then uh, most recently, Austin Malota, a defensive tackle from uh, Corona, California, is also verbally committed, which was a big surprise. No one knew he was even in town, mm -hmm. let alone committing to Oregon. You got that. You got that name. Yeah, it's right it's difficult. It's really <laughs> difficult. I've taken a lot of practice. There you go. Uh, the past three years, there's been a late surprise. It was yeah. D'Anthony Thomas, then Eric Armstead, then last year, Tarani Prevo. Anybody that, that you think might be a late flip to Oregon on signing day on Wednesday? If there's going to be one, it's going to be John Smith. And it's he's not committed to anybody right now, but it's Oregon going into this week, this past weekend was considered such far out of, of the running to, to be in this race for uh, jo John Smith. I think if he does flip, that would be that big shocker. Uh, but there's no guys that we know of right now, like a Toronto Prevo who was committed to another school that would flip. And that's why they're, they're, they're called shockers, because no one knows about it. Oregon's known for doing it, though. The last four or five years, they've always had a big signing day surprise. And I wouldn't be shocked if they had one now. We'll find out on Wednesday if there are any signing day surprises in this year's class. Signing day on Wednesday, the newest class of Ducks and Beavers committing to spend the next four years in the Willamette Valley. Matt Prem of Duck Territory of the 24-7 Sports Network, thanks for joining us no on problem. Sunday Sports Extra.